I came upon him. And if he had not heard me coming, I would have fallen over him too, but he got up in time. He rose and swayed slightly, misty and silent before me while at my back the fires loomed in between the trees. You will be lost, I said. Utterly lost. One gets sometimes such a flash of inspiration, you know. I did say the right thing. Though indeed, he could not have been more irretrievably lost than he was at this very moment as the foundations of our intimacy were being laid to endure. To endure, even to the end, even beyond. I had immense plans, he muttered irresolutely, in a voice of longing, with a wistfulness of tone that made my blood run cold. I tried to break the spell, the heavy, mute spell of the, the wilderness that seemed to draw him to its pitiless breast by the awakening of forgotten and brutal instincts by the memory of gratified and monstrous passions. This alone, I was convinced, had beguiled his unlawful soul beyond the bounds of permitted aspirations. Soul, if anybody has ever struggled with a, a soul, I am the man. And I wasn't arguing with a lunatic either. Believe me or not, his intelligence was perfectly clear, but his soul was mad. Being alone in the wilderness, it had looked within itself, and by heavens, I tell you, it had gone mad. I had, from my sins, I suppose, to go through the ordeal of looking into it myself. I kept my head pretty well, and yet when I had him at last stretched on the couch, I wiped my forehead while my legs shook under me as though I had carried half a ton down the hill. And yet, I had only supported him. His bony arm clasped round my neck, and he was not much heavier than a child. One evening, coming in with a candle, I stood over him as if transfixed. Anything approaching the change that came over his features, I have never seen before and hope never to see again. Oh, I wasn't touched. I was fascinated. It was as though a veil had been rent. I saw on that ivory face the expression of somber pride, a ruthless power, of craven terror of an intense and hopeless despair. Did he live his life again in every detail of desire, temptation, and surrender, in that supreme moment of complete knowledge? He cried out at some image, at some vision. He cried out twice, a cry it was no more than a whisper. The horror. The horror. I went no more near the remarkable man who had pronounced a judgment upon the adventures of his soul on this earth. And then they nearly buried me. I have wrestled with death. It is the most unexciting contest you can imagine. It takes place in an impalpable grayness with nothing underfoot, with nothing around, without spectators, without clamor, without glory, without the great desire of victory, without the great fear of defeat. In a, a sickly atmosphere, 
tepid skepticism. I was within a hair's breadth of the last opportunity for pronouncement, and I found with humiliation that probably I would have nothing to say. This is the reason why I affirm Kurtz was a remarkable man. He had something to say. He said it, the horror. This was the expression of some sort of belief. It had candor, it had conviction, it had a vibrating note of revolt in its whisper. It had the appalling face of a glimpsed truth. It was an affirmation, a moral victory paid for by innumerable defeats, but it was a victory. That is why I have remained loyal to Kurtz to the last. I was with him to the last. I heard his very last words. Don't you hear them? A persistent whisper all around us, swelling menacingly like the first whisper of a rising wind. The horror, the horror. Do you see him? Do you see the story? Do you see anything? It seems to me I am trying to tell you a, a dream, making a, a vain attempt because no relation of a dream can convey the dream sensation. That commingling of absurdity, surprise, and bewilderment. That, that notion of being captured by the incredible, which is the very essence of dreams. No, it is impossible to convey the life sensation of any given epic of one's existence. That which makes its truth, its, its meaning, its subtle and penetrating essence. No, it is impossible. We, we live as we dream alone. <laughs>